This video is for lesson 22-1 about similar right triangles. We're starting activity 22, which is about trigonometry. Learning goals are to make ratios of side lengths in similar right triangles. And when looking at the acute angle of a right triangle, figure out which side is the opposite leg and which side of the triangle is the adjacent leg. Let's skip to question five and follow the directions to draw some different right triangles on some grids. It says use each grid below to draw a right triangle that has a longer vertical leg called L and a shorter horizontal leg called S. First triangle is drawn for us. Then use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the hypotenuse, which is the letter H, and record that length at the bottom of the grid. So the first one's done, notice that the longer of the two legs is eight units, so from the bottom corner going up is eight units long. The shorter of the two legs is six units. From the bottom corner going to the right is six units. And then the hypotenuse is drawn. This is a right triangle with a square box corner. We're asked, how long is the hypotenuse? Again, the long leg was eight and the short leg was six, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find this. The hypotenuse of the triangle is the letter C in the Pythagorean theorem, or in this case, it's the letter H for hypotenuse. The shortest leg is the letter A in the Pythagorean theorem. The longer of the legs is the letter B in the Pythagorean theorem. So from a previous lesson, we have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This is 6 squared plus 8 squared equals C squared. 36 plus 64 is 100 equals c squared. And take the square root of 100 to find out that c is 10. The hypotenuse of the triangle is 10, and there's a spot for us to record that underneath the picture. Okay, there are several more of these to do. I'm going to do one more on the video, and I'm going to push pause where you can work all the others. So in grid B, the vertical leg is five units. So start here in the bottom and go up five. One, two, three, four, five. The shorter leg, the horizontal leg in this drawing is four units. One, two, three, four. Then connect these together diagonally. That's the hypotenuse. There's a 90 degree angle in the corner. Remember that that was five units long and that this one was four units. How long is the hypotenuse? The way that we would find that is go a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Substitute in the 4 and the 5. 16 plus 25 is 41. So c equals the square root of 41. We could do a decimal for this if we wanted. So right underneath the picture where it says h equals or hypotenuse equals, we'll write the square root of 41. I'm going to pause the video at this point for you to work on grid C, D, E, and F. Here's the answer for grid C. Here's my drawing of the triangle. The hypotenuse is the lowercase c in the Pythagorean theorem. This is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So without doing any work, I know the hypotenuse is 5. Here are the answers for grids D, E, and F. In grid D, we have a triangle that's 8 across the bottom and 10 tall. Here's my Pythagorean theorem work. I have that C is the square root of 164. 164 is the same thing as 4 times 41. And so I rewrote my answer as C equals 2 times the square root of 41. For grid E, here's my Pythagorean theorem work. C is the square root of 225, which is 15. And grid F, here is the Pythagorean work, and C equals the square root of 45, which is the same thing as the square root of 9 times 5, and so this can be written as 3 square root of 5. Next, look at question 6. Some of the triangles are similar to each other. Identify the groups of similar triangles using their grid letter. We should find a group that has three similar triangles, and a group of two similar triangles. The group that has just two similar triangles are grid D and grid B. 
Notice that the numbers in grid D are all two times larger than the sides in group B. And so the scale factor connecting grids B and grids D is scale factor 2. You multiply these numbers by 2 and you get these numbers over in D. Next, the group of three similar triangles include grid A, grid C, and grid E. Notice that these numbers are all multiples of what's in grid C. So like the 3, 4, 5, and this one here is 6, 8, 10. You just multiply 3, 4, 5 by 2 to get the 6, 8, 10. If you take the 3, 4, 5 and multiply by 3, you get the 9, 12, and 15. Grid F, on the other hand, does not have another triangle in this set of 6 that is similar to it. And so in number 6, grid B was similar to grid D, and grids A, C, and E are similar. Let's move ahead a little bit and discuss some vocabulary about right triangles. In any right triangle, the hypotenuse is opposite from the right angle. For each acute angle, one of the right triangle's legs is known as the angle's opposite leg, and the remaining leg is known as the angle's adjacent leg. In triangle CAR, which you see drawn here, the hypotenuse is segment AC. Notice that it is, in fact, opposite from the right angle, angle R. So this one is the hypotenuse. If we look at either of the acute angles, then we can name the legs in relation to that angle. Let's first look at acute angle A. When we're looking at acute angle A, this side of the triangle is adjacent to angle A, whereas this side over here is opposite from angle A. However, if we focus our attention on angle C and look up here, then in relation to angle C, it's this side that's adjacent to angle C, and going across the triangle over here, this side is opposite from angle C. So you can see that what we're calling adjacent or opposite depends upon what angle we're looking at to begin with. Let's go to number seven. In right triangle BUS, identify the opposite leg and adjacent leg. We can't do this unless we focus on one of the acute angles. And it tells us based on angle U. So focus your attention on angle U. Now we can label what's the opposite leg and what's the adjacent leg. Across the triangle from U is the opposite leg. Forming angle U along with the hypotenuse is the adjacent leg. We weren't asked for it, but the other side here is called the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So notice as you travel across the triangle to the opposite side, that's the hypotenuse. Let's do the check your understanding questions. Number eight, are all isosceles right triangles similar, yes or no? An isosceles right triangle is a right triangle that has two congruent sides, this one and this one. Let me draw you another isosceles right triangle. It will have a 90 degree angle, and this side will be congruent to this side. Let me draw yet another one, larger yet. An isosceles right triangle has a 90 degree angle, and this side is congruent to this side. Are these similar? Are they the same shape? Yes, they are. The reason that they're similar is one of the postulates from first semester called the side angle side similarity postulate. Now number nine, two right triangles are similar with a scale factor of three to 4.5. The triangle with the shorter hypotenuse has legs six and eight. What's the length of the longer hypotenuse? This talks about two right triangles. So let's draw the first one that's mentioned. There's a 90 degree angle. One of the legs is 6 and the other leg is 8. So the one that looks shorter will call 6, the other one will call 8. 
we can figure out the hypotenuse with the Pythagorean theorem or recognizing this is a 6, 8, 10 triangle. Now it talks about there being another triangle with a longer hypotenuse. So let's draw one that's similar in shape but a little larger. How long's the hypotenuse? We don't know what it is. Maybe we'll call it H. Now what we have to work with is we're told the scale factor. It's 3 to 4.5. Let's analyze that ratio a little bit. What do you multiply the 3 by in order to get 4.5? Over here on the side of the screen, 3 times what number, I'm going to choose the letter K to be that unknown scale factor, equals 4.5. Divide both sides by 3, and we can find the answer for K. It's 1.5. Our scale factor is 1.5. What that means is that we multiply the numbers in the small triangle by 1.5 to figure out the numbers in the large triangle. And we can use that to get h. We can take the 10 and times by 1.5. We find out that h is 15. So we figured out the hypotenuse of the large triangle by using the scale factor. The scale factor is the number you times by to change the sides of a triangle. So in this lesson we looked at right triangles and practiced using the Pythagorean theorem again to figure out the hypotenuse when we knew how long the legs were. We also practiced using scale factor which is a number you multiply by to change the size of a shape. We also learned some vocabulary the words adjacent leg and opposite leg to refer to the sides of a right triangle.